this is power, your power, to keep stores and businesses open, to cheer for the home team, to enjoy your favorite treats, to protect your family and community. The power to help beat this crisis is in your hands. All you have to do is wear it on your face. Let's mask up for Lancaster. Good morning. Wake up, guys. It's TCP in the morning. Wake, wake up. up. Wake 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 up. It's TCP in the morning. 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 TCP in the morning. It's 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 TCP in the morning. Good morning. Wake up, y'all. It's TCP in the morning with the morning tea. Sing the song here in the back. TCP in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> My name is Shane Meadows. I am the co founder and co executive director of Advantage Lancaster, a nonprofit for young people trying to help them seek higher education opportunities or post secondary opportunities. The past year and a half, the COVID-19 epidemic has affected our organization specifically in just ways in which we mentor and connect with young people. It is very hard, extremely hard, to make connections with young people through Zoom. And so I would say probably the hardest thing to do um, through this epidemic is creating new relationships, um, building on bonds that we had in the past, um, just being able to touch your students, give them a hug or a high five. And, or, or, or to sharing meaningful experiences in person. And so we lost out on 18 months or 19 months of being able to share each other's stories, give each other hugs, laugh, smile, and basically have in-person programming. Advantage Lancaster's relationship with Dr. Hamlin is, is a personal relationship first. Um, so Sharice and I, we are both um, founders of nonprofits that are run by African-American and founded by African-American people. So we connect at a certain level through that. So we talk to each other about advice on how can we collaborate or even, you know, what are some pitfalls in a nonprofit world that we should be aware of or what are some grant opportunities that we should be aware of. Um, there'll be opportunities for Advantage Lancaster students to work for Patients Are Waiting. So as an educator for 20 some plus years, uh, I work with children. I'm a sixth grade teacher as well as a nonprofit co founder. So I thought it was really important for me as far as me being safe and uh, being in the classroom with students, as well as my mom is in her 70s. I just lost my dad and I just felt like I wanted to hug my mom. And like I said on a Zoom call, you can't hug your mom on a Zoom call, you can't wipe away tears on a Zoom call. And so I knew as soon as I got the opportunity to get vaccinated, you know, I was going to do so because I wanted to be safe for my family, for the students that I taught, but on a personal level for my mother. Um, I wanted to be able to be with my family. And, you know, it was a no brainer for me in that aspect. As far as the pandemic affecting communities of color, anytime you have um, extreme situations like a pandemic, not like we have these all the time, but it's always going to affect communities of colors or those underrepresented in life even more than other communities. And so I would read on, on, in the paper or see on the news um, the numbers and the disproportionate rates of how it was affecting um, people of color. And so I thought it was very important for me to do my part in making sure that I was safe and making sure the people in my family um, could be safe. Um, I just thought it was just really important for people of color to take it seriously. I'm very optimistic um, when I look at what patients are waiting are do is doing. I mean, they're mobilizing. I mean, every weekend you see them offering the vaccine to people. And I'm not sure what the turnout is, but they're not stopping. And so that gives me hope that, you know, there are people out there that are continuing to fight and, you know, get that message out that the, that the virus is real. And if you want to be safe, this is an option for you. 
So I'm very optimistic as far as I do know that there are healthcare workers and there are people that are, you know, still fighting the fight as far as making sure that the right information and the vaccine is getting out to people who may be reluctant, who may have some hesitancy. Good morning. Wake up, guys. It's TCP in the morning. Wake, Wake up. up. Wake 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 up. It's TCP in the morning. 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 TCP in the morning. It's 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 TCP in the morning. Good morning. Wake up, y'all. It's TCP in the morning with the morning tea. Sing a song here in the back. TCP in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> Tackle a lion. <laughs> Bite a bear. <laughs> Sarge, what up, man? <laughs> Bite me kissing. I'm a cat in the wine next Hey, what up, y'all? How y'all doing? Happy hump day. Glad y'all can tune in. Hey, y'all. You could have been anywhere else today, but you know where you're at? Yes. You're locked in, tuned in. If you're first time watching the show, see what we're about. Yes. Tell a friend to tell a friend. TCP in the morning. We about that life. What up, though? Yeah, man. Let's yeah. Go. Let's go, Lady L. Hey, good morning, good morning, good morning. Thanks for watching. Thanks for tuning in. Go on ahead, show us some love, and share the stream. Hey, listen, don't forget, we also got some episodes of TCP in the morning up on our YouTube page. So go on ahead and check it out. We got a fantabulous show for you. We got an in studio guest. And also, 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 happening this Friday, we are entering into week four of the Health Equity Now Music Festival. So come on down, get your flu shot, your vaccination, or your booster. I mean, if anything else, come and get a platter for the chef in your life, the cook in your life. Say, give them a break and show them some love and come down, get a platter from Soulfully Famous. All going down this Friday, Health Equity Now Music Festival, hosted by the ladies for patients are waiting, our black lady doctors. Yes. Um, so, yeah, I am so excited for today's show. Listen, if you've never twerked to acapella, you got to try something new. Uh, but listen, for all my people out there, I want to remind you, you're not a minority. Black people's cultural influence on the mainstream alongside their economic power and innovation has long established us as the foundation of mankind. And logically, people who are of the global majority can't be considered minorities. Welcome to the show today, guys. Over to the desk. Let them know what we got going on today, boss. 
Uh, folks, um, my name is, uh, well, you know, some people that don't know how to pronounce my name call me Marcus. You can call me Marquise, last hey. name Lupton. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Also known as uh, Dish Jockey Quiet Storm. DJ Quiet Storm. One of three hosts, one of four personalities on this thing we call TCP in the morning. The best thing that you can have in your cup. The best thing you can have in your thermos. The best thing that you can have in your mug. In your face. In your grill. All up in you. Hashtag gynecology. Just to let you know, folks. <laughs> we got a jam-packed show for you today. But before we do that, let's get over to DJ Double O. What up, man? I'm feeling real rejuvenated this morning. Like, I feel like we're an exclusive club. <laughs> that Southern Market visit was something special for me. Oh, man. So yeah. I'm, I'm going to just sprinkle that in on our morning because it, it, it was sprinkled so well on my evening. Anyway, I'm glad to be here. I'm looking for y'all in the comments. Uh, everybody that I can see so far said good morning. So um, that's oh. great news. <laughs> anyway. Starting so, off right. They ain't right. Shy no more. Right. It's time to get these people the news. Man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Folks, um, the folks that are listening, who we got? Lisa, good morning to you. Taekwon, good morning. Terry, good morning to you. Hey. Karina, good morning. Nyla, good morning. Good morning to you. Venus, happy Wednesday hey, hump, to babe. you. Keep on fighting the good fight. Up on Capitol Hill. Um, Sammy, good morning to you as well. I hope all is well down in Florida. Uh, ho hope you're doing well, enjoying all that good weather. Uh, and Lisa says, yes, the energy remix. Corinne, good morning to you. Lisa, hell yeah. Yes. We are ready for the food. Yes. Sophie is at the door as we speak. <laughs> Amen, won't he do? Uh, listen, how do you know she at the door? Is that did she write that in the comments? I'm at the door, y'all. Uh, uh, do she, she's do in that. my she she's in my inbox and was like, I'm here. That's what Sharice used to do. And I was Not like, me. ooh. Yes. Yes. Let him we, you, let him we, skipped out. <laughs> we skipped out on on junk food. I like that's what I call uh, any kind of fast food restaurant. It's on I call it junk food. Mm -hmm. Um that's the language that we use in our house. And so we skipped the junk food this morning. Because we were like, hopefully Famous is coming to the studio. And I want to make sure that I can enjoy My palate is clean <laughs> and untethered, untouched, and ready. You can and tell ready. she just finished watching us talking about untethered. Oh, <laughs> 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 uh, it was Tuesday night last night, right? Was Tuesday night. This is yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, as, uh, Joel says, good morning, lady and gents. Jen says... Hey. Good morning, and then Joel says she ready. Yeah, definitely, <laughs> definitely is. Uh, um, Venus says sweet potato pie. I needs it now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. Last we, 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 night was a good time, man. Yes, yes, we got yes, to hang was. out last night. Yes, yes, um, indeed. We're missing, we're missing one. We're missing Lady L. Yes. Uh, but we got the chance to go down to a private pre-opening party down at uh, the Southeast, yes. the New Southeast Market. I'll tell you what, man. It looks good down there. The food smelled delicious. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was a um, uh, it was a great a great experience. Um, and you should go down there. And that's all we're going to say because uh, they need to cut us a check <laughs> before we start advertising for them. So thank you. You did report on the story though. <laughs> right, right, right. So, so I, I think it's uh, fair to say that it's time to give the people. Yeah, yeah, it is. Uh -oh. Yeah, it is. Uh oh. Hey, hey, Folks, hey, we got a jam packed hey, show for you. Hey, Rock with us. Hey, yeah. Hey. Talking about um, Florida cancels a lecture because of um, critical race theory concerns. All the hey, show. time to get the people. Yeah. Get the people what they want. And that's the news. With the. Jimmy! Thanks for stopping by. Remix. Our first story for today, folks. Um, let me do a quick rundown because I didn't do that. Excuse me. Um, uh, our, our rundown for today is um, John Fetterman. John Fetterman um, skips, skips a forum uh, with black clergy. You know, um, so we're going to dig, dig into that. Um, also, Conestoga Valley School District um, warns it's approaching critical mass uh, with bus driver shortage. So we'll be digging into those details as well. And Krispy Kreme. Krispy Kreme will be giving 
away free donuts for uh, blood donors. So, so folks, yes, yes, yes. Um, we have some um, great what? stories for you. Hey, look. Can, can you? Yes. What? Uh, we, 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 we will dig into that. Um, well, because um, folks. I'm, I'm concerned about Krispy Kreme. Like, I think about donuts. I think about diabetes and health. And I'm like, but you're for blood? Like, I'm just I like, mean, it's 12 donuts. Like, 12. If 12 donuts give you diabetes, you already had it. But that's what I'm saying. So maybe <laughs> you shouldn't have been giving away blood. I, look, it, And does that impact the, the person that's getting the transfusion? There's what a shortage. I mean, after they're done giving the blood, they get the donuts. So there's a shortage. It's already done. I guarantee you, if there wasn't a Henny shortage, they'll be like, yo, <laughs> donate some blood, we'll give you some Henny. Because then there wouldn't be no more shortage. Or if they were doing cash, like I know plasma back in the back in the day, like it wasn't like ten years ago. Back in the day, that, that ten like years ago, ten you, weeks ago, ten, <laughs> ten years ago, you could you could sell your plasma for like one hundred twenty-five dollars. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I used to do that every month. All right, get drink, yes. yeah, drinking money in college. Yeah, yeah, it was. All, All right, right. So, so um, we are not telling you to sell so, your plasma. Your so, plasma. um, <laughs> uh, folks, our our first story, uh, for. For today, uh, Florida School District cancels professors' civil rights lectures, uh, citing concerns over critical race theory. Uh, folks, here, here we are. Um, we're here now. Um, we're, we're now um, we're in the fallout of all of the uh, critical race theory legislation. So, concerns over critical race theory led to cancellation of a history professor's civil rights history seminar in Florida. Flagler College professor J. Michael Butler scheduled a workshop called The Long Civil Rights Movement, which argues that the civil rights movement existed long before and postdated Martin Luther King Jr. by decades. The seminar prepared for the Escuela school district teachers was canceled less than 24 hours of its scheduling due to state Senate committee legislation requested by Republican Governor Ron DeSantis. Um, so, folks, here we are in in the fallout where uh, where educational opportunities um, are are being uh, stripped because of this legislation. Now, NBC News reports that Butler was shocked to learn that the seminar had been canceled, but was not surprised because educators deal with intimidating tactics over critical race theory. There's a climate of fear, an atmosphere created by Governor Ron DeSantis that has blurred the lines between scared and opportunistic, Butler said. The victims of the censorship are history and the truth. The end game is they're going to make teaching civil rights into critical race theory, and it's not. I'm going to leave it right there because that's exactly, that's exactly what they're going to do. They're going to, even though critical race theory a form of it should should be taught in in schools. They're going to bleed it into teaching about civil rights. Right. They're going to bleed it into teaching about Martin Luther King. They're going to bleed it into teaching about Malcolm X. They're going to bleed it into teaching about anything right. so we, black. We already got one one uh what in our history books. Martin Luther King got like a quarter of a page. Harriet Tubman got like this little picture of herself up in a corner. Right. You know, so it wasn't even like there was a whole bunch of black history right. going on anyway. Like the thing is that you you learned American history and they kind of just act like they 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 just wouldn't talk about slavery. Mm -hmm. That that's what my my less empowered white teachers did, they just didn't talk about it. It would just be like, yeah, we're in the reconstruction time. We're in this period, 18 so and so, 18 such and such, and you know, America, we just got out the Civil War and we're doing this and that, and they kind of just don't talk about anything else about like what happened with the black people and different laws and things that they started to enact. They, they kind of just ignored all of that. Um, now, what I did have was a number of dope white male teachers who went above and beyond. My dope, and they were always history teachers, which is probably why I wanted to be a history teacher always went above and beyond like they at some point they weren't even using our textbook anymore they were like ask jeeves printouts you know that told us different things about history and people and i appreciate that them for this because they said these kids need to know these things 
It's not in our curriculum. They're not talking about it in this book. I'm going to make the extra effort, take that extra step. So super dope. And, I, and, and it's sad because those same types of teachers would today be condemned. You know, would today have issues, potentially lose their jobs and, and things of that nature. And it's strange because how is it teaching about American history? What does that have to do with critical race theory? And if you feel as though teaching about American history has to do with critical race theory, then you need to really reevaluate how you see American society. Like, I mean, like, think about the history of America. We start American history at the pilgrims. As if they were here. At right. <laughs> the pilgrims. That's where we start American history. America starts when Europeans came over here. That's when it started, even though there were people already here. You see what I'm saying? And now the descendants of those same people are saying, hey, we can't teach about critical race theory. We can't. Y'all weren't, but y'all were teaching us about Columbus. And he discovered America. But Columbus wasn't with the pilgrims when they got here. Somebody help me. Over to the desk. All right. Well, I'm, I'm going to speak from, it from, uh, from a standpoint along the lines of, here we go again. All right. Where was all this outrage as slavery was being taught in schools? As, 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 the, as, as black history... As, as what you, as what society, or I want to say, as what the government deemed legal Black history. Where was the outrage for that? Yeah. And even after, I'd say, say, oh, that's how it was back then. But even after you realized it was wrong, where was the outrage yet? How, how long they let it go on once they realized yeah, it was a problem? It still goes on. And, and do you mean to tell me stupid reasons too? Yeah. Do you mean to tell me that you don't think the way that uh, the way that the his, that Black history is taught, you don't think that has an impact? on little black kids? You don't think watching Roots had an impact on, on me as a youngster, me as a kid? Everything has its impacts. You, you need to, you don't think, like it, it showed that you were wrong already. Like history shows you're wrong already, accept it. Right. Like you say, oh, don't make us, let's not talk about history where we feel bad. Where? We can't. You can't talk about history without not, without hurting any feelings because people were wrong people were wrong people were messed up and people are still continuing to be the same people today right by enacting stupid things like this by making this thing actually a freaking thing yeah yo can you can you imagine can you imagine if um if the nazis in germany said um all right y'all look here's what we're not going to do we're not going to teach about the Nazis. We're not going to talk about, you know, the gas chambers. Um, we're not going to talk about none of that stuff. We're just Trains, going to e erase that period of time. We're going to erase that um, from from our conversations because, you know, when we talk about Nazis, we hurt their feelings and we don't want to hurt the Nazis feelings. So therefore, we're not going to talk about this moment in time, this moment in history that has shaped our present moment. We're not going to talk about that. And, and that's, that's what they're doing here. You know, this is, this is, again, this is state propaganda. I look at Governor Ron DeSantis and I see somebody that is pretty much doing the most because they're trying to get elected. They're doing this to appeal to a certain base that they feel as though will be riled up and ready to go for 2024. This isn't about looking out for, you know, your fellow man or anything like that. Even for you fellow GOPers that think that, oh, we got one, we're winning. Like, this man ain't for you. He's going to play you just like Biden played us. Straight out. Um, last president. Uh, we do got a comment here on IG. Kinfolk Minimalist, thank you for watching. Thank you for tuning in. Uh, she says, yep, wow, as we talked about uh, history, and then said all black kids should attend Pan-African school, which I think is a great idea. And I, I think that kind of offers solutions, right? Like, if I, if I can't send my child to a public school to learn what should be general knowledge about our, our life here and our society here in America, if, if I can't send them to public school for that, then maybe we should consider sending our kids to pan-African school so that they can be educated in the ways in which we want them to. You know, like, 
And there's nothing wrong with that. That's coming soon because everybody's been talking about it. It's coming. It's happening. I can feel it. Um, but yeah, uh, I wanted to say that there was also an interview. They did ask the spokeswoman for DeSantis, uh, Christina Pushaw. She denied the allegations that pointed out that DeSantis, and she said he had nothing to do with the, the Oswella School County controversy. She said critical race theory and factual history are two different things. The endless attempts to gaslight Americans by, con by conflating the two are as ineffective as they are tiresome. She said this in an email. So just to be clear, mixing up teaching history with teaching CRT is dishonest. But isn't that what your whole dude's campaign was about? Yeah. yeah. Isn't CRT about teaching civil rights? Isn't it, isn't it bad to talk about how the entire police force were filled with white men and that entire white police force was then put out there towards black people and terrorizing their homes and being a part of the KKK. Or let's talk about Bull Connor it's from Alabama. Like, let you can't talk about these people. You can't talk about those things. It's in the name. I, I mean, you you think about CRT. CRT could be what? Critical race theory, or it could be civil rights theory. Or conflict you, resolution training. You, you know, and and this is something that that for for whatever reason, you know, we know the reason, um, but for whatever reason, reason they're choosing to have this level of censorship, and this is this is fueled, engineered, all by white supremacy. Like like this is this is this is white supremacists having a tantrum in real time in our faces because they're like our country isn't our country anymore. You know, and, and they're going to great lengths, legislative lengths. So, folks, I hope you're out there listening. I hope you're getting active and I hope you're getting involved because these people literally want to kill you. And that's not hyperbole or anything like that. That is a fact. You look at the legislation that they have put forth. They are trying to take food out of your mouth, out of your kids' mouths. Get active, get involved. And they're trying to shut you up listen, about it, too. Here's the thing. We, 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 <laughs> right. Listen, we can't do a show in Florida, guys. Don't invite us. Don't call us down. I don't know what we're going to do about the ripple effect. Because here's the thing. DeSantis, um, he's blocking public schools and private businesses from making people feel discomfort when they're talking about race. And then it, he, also has, he also says that he wants to empower parents to sue schools that teach critical race theory. I mean, that's, look, 1961. All right, 1961, California leading the way. First decided to start teaching black history. Mm. 1961, 1969, uh, Kent State, students at Kent State proposed the Black History Month. All right, they celebrated in 1970. Where's black, 1970 to, what are we in, 2023? 2022. How long, that's not that long, is it? Let's do the math. 50 Let's, years. How much? 50. 50? So there's, you mean to tell me there's people still alive? So you mean yeah. to tell me the majority of people. There are people born, born so, that are still, they're 50. So, 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 the people, <laughs> so the people in the Senate, the people in the House, mm -hmm. these are the same people same. running our country. Same people. That were alive when this stuff was going on, that thought it was right, and feel like they should have a say and control this. Yeah. Make why? Make why? Sense. All right. Uh, from Florida to Virginia, to, to wherever else, like you have things like this happening that are continuing to, to keep us from progressing as a society, from moving forward. You wanna hear people stop, oh, stop bringing up slavery, stop bringing up slavery. Slavery happened, it's a part of history. Right. All right, well, who, who were the slave captains? Who, who were the slavers? Definitely. All right, we have to talk about them too. For so long, all we did was talk about the slaves. We never talked about the slavers. We didn't. All right, like we would see blip, blips and pieces of them being mean, and that, that was it. That's all we got. Right. We didn't got, yo, well, these people really, look, look what they did with their families, and then look what they did with their slaves. Right. And how they benefited economically right. and built generational wealth off of free labor. Right. We never talked about that. We just talked about the free labor yep. part, but never talked about, I mean, well, think about all of the acreage of land. And think about how big the house itself was. Who was in power at this time? All right. Who was in power? Who did these people give the go-ahead to? 
All right, who do these people deem their successors? Right. Who do their successors look up to? Uh, we can follow the trail. It's not, it's not that old. We can still follow the trail. All right, if we really want to root out racism in it, at its core, that's what we have to do. Right. I, I got an idea. Why can't we just flip the script? Flip the script. Flip the script. If I'm, if I'm a parent in Florida or in, one of, or in Texas or one of these CRT banning states, and I'm a black parent and I want my child to learn certain aspects of American history, I'm going to advocate on the other side of CRT and be like, you ain't teaching this, you ain't teaching that, you ain't doing this, you ain't doing that. So then, and you not teaching about black life and about, you know, those things in your history, you are then, in a sense, teaching critical race theory because you're then just making it look like whiteness and white identity is the beginning and the end. Mm -hmm. Is the alpha and the omega. Right? So now I'm offended, but I'm just wondering, could that be a thing? And if you are in Florida, is that a thing? You know, can you flip it around? You know, I don't, I don't want my kids learning about Christopher Columbus, CRT. I don't want my kids learning about them pilgrims, CRT. I don't want my kids learning about the Nina de Pinta and the Santa Maria, CRT. CRT yeah. I don't want none of that. Even, even the Civil War. Like, how can you talk about the Civil War? You know, we keep saying never, always, always, never, always, what is it? Always remember, never forget. Right. 9-11, all these different things that happened over time. Pearl Harbor, you know, but uh, we talk about how history is being erased. Like, we start to, we start to see it for ourselves since we've been older. Right. Our, we see things, we've learned things that we never knew in high school. We never knew growing up until we researched it for ourselves. Right. How many people out there knew about Tulsa, Oklahoma? How many people right. knew about Rosewood? How many people knew about black cities, black towns being covered with lakes? Lake Lanier is one of them. And that's, or, that's a place that people go to in Georgia all the time. Why, why isn't this taught in school? It needs to be taught in school. Like, we are doomed to repeat our history if we do not learn from it. So if we don't learn our history, we're going to repeat it. Yeah, folks, let's get to these comments. The comment section is en fuego. Uh, so um, uh, Keisha says facts, and it says good topic, critical race theory. Can't hide the truth. Uh, Priscilla, what is going on? She says uh, there was a lot of black history being taught, but it was filtered. Uh, Keisha says uh, little still is much. Seek knowledge. Uh, Cassentia. Thomas, I hope I said that right. Uh, she says, um, they educate you on what they want. We know the truth as African Americans. Um, Priscilla says, we need unfiltered black history taught. Um, Karina says, I'm with you, Lady L. Terry says, Lady L, facts this morning. Uh, Venus says, the food is here uh, and says, uh, it's violence. Priscilla says, I agree. Karina says, and they do gloss over civil rights movement and Jim Crow. Like it is truly history, and like we don't still see the impacts today. Trying um, to cut our lights off, like we don't live here. Yeah. Um, Priscilla says, I never thought I would say this, but thank you, social media, for putting out uh, info that wasn't put out before. Um, Danielle, good morning to you. She says, Good morning, ladies and gents. And then um, uh, Keisha says, uh, Be cautious guys and Rebecca good morning to you Rebecca she says you do know that the fight isn't even about critical race theory it just happened to be the next key phrase after after the mask fight but the fight wasn't about the masks it was just the next talking point after the stolen election absolutely Priscilla says if we have to stop talking about slavery then we have to stop talking about the civil war and you might as well throw in there the revolutionary war too um, Keisha yeah, says, stop talking about the Boston Tea Party, too. Yeah, um, uh, Keisha says, uh, <laughs> reparations, uh, the big, the big C. And then, um, Danielle says, and the only way we were taught the true brutalization of slaves was through our parents and grandparents because schools teach kids that slavery wasn't brutal. And then, uh, Keisha says, uh, right over and booyah, and there it is. Sizzle it, Lady L. Um, and, 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 then, um, and then 
Karina says, um, I'm erasing indigenous nations and people all over the Americans. Priscilla says, and the saddest thing is, slavery is still going on. There was a plantation discovered in Georgia who still had Mexican slaves. Uh, Keisha says, uh, speak, speak at TCP in the morning. Um, Priscilla says, Antebellum wasn't just a movie. Yes, exactly. It was a documentary. Um, uh, Keisha says, say less, y'all. Gary. Good morning to you, Gary. Gary says, good morning. You all know that I'm from Miami, Florida. Like Jimmy Buffett says, like Jimmy Buffett says, everybody's got their crazy cousin in Miami. I'm not related to DeSantis, but had my cousins voted in every election, he would not be in office. Great Say point. that, Gary. Great point. Uh, Chiquita says, as parents, the things we learn about our history and our culture as adults need to be taught unfiltered at home if it isn't being taught in school. And then Jordan, what's going on, what's Jordan? Going on? Jordan up, says, uh, there's people out there in power who know history and want to repeat it. That's a that great part. part. That part. Yeah. Great point. They wanted to go back, make America right. great again. Right. And then uh, and then my sister says, uh, hey, big bro, love you. <laughs> love you too, sis. Thank you for joining in on this uh, conversation. So, um, uh, uh, Sarge, before we get to the next story, what were you going to say? I was going to say, uh, this voting matters, y'all. Voting matters. You cannot, like, we can't keep putting people in power, you know, right. that are going to do the wrong thing. All right, like the Trump, Trump administration, prior to them getting out, I'm not going to get get on Trump again, but prior to him getting out, yo, they were falsifying, they were trying to falsify the election. Yeah. All right, like they, they were, yeah, they were committing treason, they were committing crimes against the United States. Yeah. They need to be punished. They need to be locked up, not a slap on the wrist. They need to pay. Under the jail. Because if it was anybody else, how would it be? The Black Panthers, what happened to the Black Panthers? Yo, and if, the story needs to be told appropriately. Like, yeah. yeah, so now you're telling me we can't talk about this? So we can't talk about January 6th, because why? Who's going to feel bad? DeSantis and his homies. Right. <laughs> Voting matters, all right? Because if you don't vote, you know what happens? Things that happen like in Virginia, all right? All right, yeah. that's where our next story goes, if, all if right? If you don't vote, somebody so, does. Imagine, <laughs> think about it. Like, like imagine if Andrew Gilliam would have won. Mm -hmm. We wouldn't right. even be here. That's right. No, we, we would be here. Well, we we well, would be talking well, about this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> We'll probably be talking about, oh, Florida done did such and such for the HBCU and... Look at baby California. Right, right, exactly. <laughs> and, and, and like, East Cali. How, like, how, how do you get, like, you have states that really don't care. Yeah. Like PA, all right? Pennsylvania, woo! Keystone State, woo! Had to turn in their district dr district maps, the voting maps. Had to draw their district lines maps, all right? To make sure there wasn't... Jer make sure gerrymandering wasn't crazy. Right. You know what they did? Did what they wanted, turned in what they wanted, knowing it's going to get vetoed. Why? Because they don't care. Yeah. They're not held accountable. They're not voted out of office. The cycle continues. Yeah. People not uh, paying attention to politics, man. All right, so our next story comes out of Virginia. All right, so Virginia's newly elected Republican governor who has already banned critical race theory. In His first schools. day. Like, first day. Mind you, Republican has been governor of Virginia in over 10 years. In over 10 years, so first thing you do is, I'm going to get here and show my tail. All right, he's launching a tip line to report teachers of, diver of divers uh, divisive subjects. Divisive subjects. In a Monday interview with the conservative radio host John Fredericks, Governor Glenn Youngkin said parents could email the state government to report any public school teachers they believe to be behaving object objectionably. That doesn't even sound right. All right, so Youngkin said, we're asking for folks to send us report, <coughs> reports and observations that they have that, will, uh, that they have that will help us be aware of things like privilege, bingo, be aware of their child being denied, their rights that parents have in Virginia, and we're going to make sure we catalog, we catalog it all. This gives us a great insight into what's happening at a school level, and that gives us further ability to make sure we're rooting it out. Youngkin, the first Republican to win the state in more than 10 years, was sworn into office earlier this month. He made critical race theory an academic practice developed by legal scholars to examine the ongoing effects of racism in America policies and institutions, a key component of his 2021 campaign. Youngkin banned the teaching of inherently divisive, sub divisive concepts on his first day in office. The order didn't define divis divisive concepts, but it cited Critical race theory as an example. The order was issued even though critical race theory was never part of the state's public school curriculum. 
As one of his first moves in office, he also removed the school mask requirement statewide, allowing parents to opt out of compulsory mask rules in classrooms and prompting several school districts to defy the move. Governor Youngkin, you are a turd. <laughs> but you're a turd, but you are. I, I can't, I hope you get voted out. I hope, I hope you don't win the next election. I hope nothing works for you after this. You know, because you created a tip line, all right? He created a tip line for this. A Me snitch line. Yeah, a snitch line. Meanwhile, in New Mexico, you know what they did? They created a line to report racism, to report biases in the school district. So good job, New right. Mexico. Right. How, how are we so separated and split across the United States? Like, it's this bad. It's always I, been I, this bad. I was about to say, I think it's, it's, it's always, always been like this. We're just seeing it now on a large scale, right? We, we, we normally call them, what, microaggressions, mm -hmm. right? Now imagine if all the microaggression people all got together, right? This is what we're seeing. This is what it looks like. I mean, we, we've been in our own silos and we can't hide anymore because now they're, com now they're coming for our kids. Yeah. Now they're coming for our kids. And there are a number of parents who opt for public school education as a viable option. And now there's a, a part of us that's looking like uh, public. There's a number of us who already thought that public school was already subpar. However, it was, you know, we can supplement. Mm -hmm. You know, we can supplement. I'm a parent. I'm, parents are the first teachers. So whatever school's not doing, I'm supplement at home. But now I, now I got to go beyond supplementing because now the, even the stuff that you were teaching, you're not even teaching that now. So it wasn't like I could, I was teaching my kids, um, something that they were already learning in school and kind of elaborating on it. Now we're going to be talking about stuff that they ain't even never heard of. And it's interesting because all, you know, all children are different. So how do you have that conversation about their history and yet still show them and help them to understand their value and their worth as a person? This, this, <clears throat> this is, this is a, I, I, I put it in a comment section. This is a slippery slope. Um, um, because now, now we're, we're essentially, what they did was put this tip line in the hands of kids. So as a kid, if I don't, I like, don't like, yeah, if I don't like Mr. Johnson, then I'm calling the 800 number and I'm going to say, Mr. Johnson's in here teaching us about critical race theory. Or if I'm in just math a, class. Right, right, if I'm just a <laughs> jerk of a kid, like, just think about how many kids dialed 911 while we were um, bomb, bomb threats to schools yeah. at, at the skating castle, right? Like bomb threats to school. Like you, you, you are you are weaponizing this, and you are going to affect real people's lives. Like yo, I can see, I can see, on top of everything that's happening with the pandemic. If, if I'm a teacher in Virginia, and then now there's this, oh, I'm done. It's a wrap. It's either I'm leaving this state or I'm not being a teacher anymore. Because it, it, it's like, yo, on top of everything with the pandemic, now I got to worry about some kid snitching on me because I said Martin Luther King. And <laughs> like, like, yo. Because I, because I showed the Ruby Bridges story, because I played that DVD for the kids now, now I might not have a job. Right. Like, like just, just think about that. As, as a history teacher, during Black History Month, you have to be like, all right, should I show this Jackie Robinson movie? How, how can there well, be a can, Black can History Month? There's going to be I'm, a I'm, list I'm, of appropriate I'm, I'm, documents that they can use, man. There, there's going to be a list of resources for them to use, like the same way that they were providing the books. It's going to be a similar format. But, do, but yeah, it's but you're saying, you're saying they're going to give it to them, which means that it doesn't exist right now because they just made this stuff up yesterday. Right. They're, right. they're making That's this up so as it goes. Right. <laughs> right. So they're saying, hey, we're building this plane and all these parts are still falling out while they're building the plane. Never mind the poverty in Virginia. I, I <laughs> you guys are paying people to move to your state. You think the last thing you want to do is talk about critical race theory. Like you, you're not even on that. You, right. You're, you're not on that scale. Calm down, young kid. Polluted beaches. You're creating a conversation that people don't want to have. Y'all still got businesses that that are closed for COVID. I remember when we went and drove down there. We sitting up here like Bush Gardens still not still, open. Still, still was closed. <laughs> but, but you know, hey, CRT. 
Now y'all got a snitch line. Like, like y'all just... And the person on the other end of it. Right. Who's going to take why, that job? Right, right. Why, why don't we call, though? Why, why don't people... CRT tip line. Who's investigating the tip line? Did they tell us that, Sarge? They told us about who's investigating no, these tips. Like, the thing is, they've, all, they have, all right, we think about what was the tip line. They, they did the tip line down in Texas. Remember yeah, for abortion. Yeah. yeah, for the abortion. And they got all kinds of prank calls. We're going to get all kinds of prank yeah. calls. We're going to get all <laughs> yeah. kinds Like, because think about America. I'm going to just make America's up a school history, that don't exist. America's history is, is all about making black people feel bad if you want to talk about it. George Washington was who? A slave, a slave owner. owner. With, with fake teeth heard, that came from his slaves. Oh, my gosh. Can't, t- can't t- take him off the dollar bill. You're going to make black people feel bad. Take him off the dollar bill. And take him off that quarter, too, on the other side of my Angela. <laughs> that was like, <laughs> still, still can't take that one. <laughs> Yo. Um, uh, so um, um, to, 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 to the comment section, uh, before we get to um, our, our next story and, and, and our, our guest today, um, we are going to uh, check, check in on um, Sofully Famous to see how the cuisine is going on back there. Uh, Keisha says, it's our voice. Priscilla says, voting, follow-up, and action matters. Priscilla, in true Nan form, I love it. Keisha says, ooh, recreations for the oppression. Love that, love that. Uh, Rebecca says, and for those of us who don't have the family stories of truth, we need those of you who do know the stories to share them so we can teach our children. That's beautiful. Absolutely. Venus says they were run out of Lancaster. That's what happened to the Panthers. Yeah, yeah, they were. They were. Uh, we got to bring um, Dr. Hopkins on here uh, so that he can um, he can talk about it. Um, Danielle says um, if voting didn't matter, they wouldn't make it so hard for people in urban cities to do so. To that point, Danielle, I wish a lot more of our uh, folks would know that. Um, Karina says exactly what happened to Lolita LeBron. Priscilla says we can't stop at just voting. We have to follow up and make who we vote for accountable. Um, and and then uh, Keisha says, uh, good article, Sarge. Taekwon says you don't need to empower parents more than the PTO. Yeah. And Karina says, do we have no respect for educators as professionals. And that's what I really want to know um, uh, as, as well. Taekwon says, uh, I, I say yes and no. Um, Keisha says, uh, talk queen, that's the truth, uh, Lady L. Um, I'm, I'm earning uh, their salary teaching my kids. Karina says, right, we have certified teachers that can't actually do their job because the state wants to insert itself. Uh, Gary says, Governor Yunkin uh, ain't got no pool in Northern Virginia because everybody in Northern Virginia knows somebody on the Hill. They are ignoring his order and will continue to. That's the uh, DMV area. Uh, Keisha says, visual audio, illustration, and knowledge reads in their hands is how. We won't support oppression, uh, Keisha says. Uh, Priscilla says, uh, teachers, do what you got to do, but please, please just teach the truth. Y'all are on fire. Keep them coming. Nyla says, um, Karen will be answering those tips and loving everything <laughs> that is reported. Uh, Danielle says, now white people are crying that we want them to feel guilty for their ancestors. But they never wanted us to be proud of ours. Right. Hey there. Right. Sorry. Now watch that switchcraft. Dropping, terrible, dropping, dropping knowledge this morning. So um, um, before we go on ahead and, and check in with uh, Soulfully Famous, uh, Lady L, can you tell us what is coming up this Friday? It's Latin night, y'all. Yes, Let's go. yes. Latin night over at Christmas Addicts for week four of the Health Equity Now Music Festival. We're going to be playing Malenga, Bachata, Salsa, all of that stuff. So come on, get your shoes on, bring out your kitten heels, and come on down to Christmas Addicts, six to nine. Uh, come get your flu shot while you're there. Get your vaccination, get your booster. Soulfully Famous will also be there um, making platters. So, you know, hook up the local cook in your life. Let them know, hey, have a break tonight. And uh, show them some love. So come on down, stop by Christmas Addicts for the Health Equity Now Music Festival. It's going down. Uh, and last week was super dope. We had Kiana Corley on. It was it was lovely. Yeah, she was nice. I loved it. Right. And and as I thought about it, kind of like even like reminded me of like Sade, like nice and smooth, like a ooh. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not a singer, guys. 
Um, <laughs> but yeah, so come on down. We'll be there live. We'll have interviews and everything like that. So come on down. Please make sure that you mask up. And also, don't forget, listen, if you have a high school junior or senior, oh, oh, what's today? Oh, today's the 26th. Hey, listen, go on ahead, check out the Patients Are Waiting website uh, to check out the 12-week um, Pipeline to Dreams program. Yes, it exposes uh, high school students uh, to the concepts of health equity research and a variety of healthcare fields. Uh, so go on ahead, visit their website. That's patientsarewaiting.com. And I'll go on ahead and drop the direct form down in the comment section for you guys. So yeah, that's what's going on this Friday, Christmas Addict 6 to 9, Health Equity Now, supporting our black lady doctors. Yes, the women over at Patients Are Waiting. So yes, so yes, so yes. So now listen, I don't know if they're going to uh, let us see what's going on back there yet, but uh, we got that coming up for you guys, so please stay tuned, IG. I don't know if y'all going to be able to see what's in the kitchen, y'all. Right. I'm not sure. You ready, bro? But definitely, Facebook is, is definitely on the Facebook stream, guys. Um, but yeah, Sergeant, did you have go. something you wanted to say? Yes, we're about to go over there now and take a look at all this yummy. All right, here we go, ladies and gentlemen. Here goes Soulfully Famous. She's in the kitchen, chefing it up for us. PCP in the mouth. Huh? All right, all right. So, guys, we're going to kick it on over to our third story for today. While Soulfully Famous is going ahead and getting it together. Uh, so... This story comes out of Philadelphia. Uh, so listen, we got to figure out what we're going to do about these votes, right? Because when we vote, people get into office like backbiting Biden, right? Didn't he say he was going to meet with Ice Cube about a plan for black people after he got into office? He still ain't met with Ice Cube, but we're not going in there. But it's just the point that I'm trying to make about elected officials getting into office. You've earned our vote, and then you don't do the work for us. So let's talk about it. Uh, Philadelphia black clergy members held a forum last week with the Pennsylvania's U.S. Senate candidates. There was one notable absence, the Democratic frontrunner, Lieutenant Governor John Fetterman, didn't attend. His main primary opponents did, answering policy questions the night after Martin Luther King Jr. Day at the historic, excuse me, Enon Tabernacle Baptist Church in Germantown. The event was streamed live by churches in Philadelphia and Pittsburgh as candidates addressed concerns raised by black leaders whose communities are a pillar of the Democratic coalition. Fetterman said he had to preside over the state Lady Senate that me. day, but to some of the roughly 25 clergy who did participate, it was damaging. It was a damaging snub. We're gonna we're gonna shoot over to. Uh... All we're right, going to shoot on over to Stone Fleet Famous in the kitchen, see what she got cooking up. So, sorry to interrupt you, lady. Uh, but... Good morning. Can everybody hear me? Good, okay. Hi, I'm so happy to be here. Good morning, everybody. Thank you so much, TCP, for having me come out. I cannot wait to, you know, do what I do. So uh, when they told me to come out, you know I had to show off a little bit. So uh, today I'm going to be doing an appetizer, an entree, and a dessert. Um, for the appetizer, we're going to be doing uh, cabbage spring rolls. For the entree, I got rasta pasta. And for dessert, y'all know I had to show off. Okay, I got sweet potato bread pudding with my peach um, peach fosters, and then we're gonna top it off with some vanilla bean ice cream. So they're gonna be checking on me throughout, and uh, I'm gonna show y'all what y'all can do. Valentine's Day is coming up, so you know, you never know. You might wanna pull these tricks out for the loved one, significant other, and, and show them that you can get down in the kitchen too. So I'm super excited to be here. Um, thank you, thank you so much. And we gonna get cooking. So I'm going to start getting my hands washed up, and y'all going to come back and check on me in a little bit. So um, right now, we um, for the appetizer, so we're going to start doing the, um, the cabbage 
cabbage spring rolls. So um, I have everything already like half prepared. So this stuff's gonna go in the pan. We're gonna saute this bad boy stuff up. Um, I mean, if y'all ready now, we can, can do some stuff now. Okay, five minutes, but yeah, so, you know, I have my little setup here. This is the, the jerk um, for the rasta pasta. We got salmon here and we have shrimp. So we're gonna put some shrimp in the pasta and then we're gonna have some shrimp sitting on top of the salmon. Cause you know, we gotta show off today. We gotta show off today. So that's already been marinating for several hours right there. We got all the setup here. Um, I originally had wanted to show you guys how to do jerk sauce, the wet one, cause there's a wet and a dry. Um, from scratch, so I did bring some ingredients. Uh, however, I, I didn't, I didn't bring the main ingredient, which was the uh, the mixer, the Robo Coop. So, we're not gonna be doing that. But um, in the event you don't want to do it from scratch, anyways, you can always go to the store and buy it already in a jar. Grace, Grace is what our people use. Uh, Grace, and uh, I think the other one is like Woodworth or something like that. Don't get the other stuff. Okay, don't get that. Stick with Grace. So. Um, yeah, I had brought some ginger, some cloves, allspice. I got my green onions. Um, I have some habaneros over here, but uh, traditionally you would use scotch bonnet. So all those Jamaicans out there, don't, don't come for me. Okay, don't come for me. I know you're supposed to use scotch bonnet, but they don't have that in Lancaster. So How long have you been doing this? How long have you been cooking? I've been cooking all my life, to be honest. Um, since I was a kid, my dad, he was in the Army. He was cooking in the Army, so we used to cook a lot. And then when they split up, you know, I was single parent home and uh, I just took over the kitchen. You know, my mom was at work and we had to eat. So I've been cooking all my life. Um, went to high school, Coastal High School, 2010 alumni. And um, Red Raiders. Hey. hey. <laughs> um, oh, I was like, oh, you can't do that. You can't do that. So um, when I went to Coastal, I also left and I would do my. Um, my trade school at uh, Cat Brandywine, which is like a little bit down the road right there. And I had got my diploma in culinary arts and restaurant management there. And then I went to culinary school after I graduated high school. And then I've been line hopping. I've been restaurant hopping. I've been working at Ruby Tuesdays, uh, Bonefish Grill, IHOP, Go to Corral, um, Texas Roadhouse, you name it. I probably was there. Or, or I'm in a competition. So um, it just got to a point where uh, I just felt like my integrity was being jeopardized and I wanted to put out good food. And um, unfortunately, you know, the times that we're living, everybody needs a job and I'm not, you know, hating on anybody, uh, but a lot of the food that was being put out was just not what I would hold to a standard of myself. So I said, you know what, and then I have children as well and the, the, the timing, it just, just wasn't right. People, um, another thing that was an issue in the kitchen is being a woman of color, you don't get paid as much. And I get down with the, I get down with the men, okay? I push them out the way. I, mm -hmm. I can do six omelets at a time. I'm, I'm real good on the line. Um, I have an adrenaline for, for fast paced situations. So they didn't want to pay me. They didn't want to pay me. I knew men that were, they weren't as good as me, but they was getting paid double me. And I was working twice as hard. So I said, you know what? I'm out. And I started working for myself. Uh, before I was so flea famous, I was LT Hearty Soul Gourmet. It was just too much. <laughs> it was too much. <laughs> All right. Well, listen, we're going to we're gonna go back to the news. We're going to get back here. I can't wait to taste this food. I'm excited. All right. So listen, get re do what you do. We'll be right back. All right. All right thank stay you. Stay This Friday, down at the Christmas Addicts Community Center, as we support our black lady doctors in the fourth week of the Health Equity Now Music Festival. Um, yeah, so it'll be Latin night. I'm not quite sure what the cuisine's gonna be like, but I'm pretty sure it's gonna be inspired by the music. So come on down to Christmas Addicts this Friday, six to nine, for the Health Equity Now Music Festival, supporting our black lady doctors. The women and founders over at Patients are waiting. We're so excited, so excited. Isn't that awesome? So go ahead guys, share the stream. Let us know that you're watching. Um, watch with a friend. We always enjoy being here with you at TCP in the morning. Sarge, what's going on? Uh, nothing much, listen, I'm excited. Uh, <laughs> I can't wait to taste that food. 
I'm, I'm hung. Like, I'm hung, all right? You guys don't understand, like, all the energy we put into this show that we do for you guys, that we'd be hungry at the end of the day. Like, not the end of the day, even. At the end of this show, like, I'd be starving. <laughs> I don't know. I'd be ready to uh, eat, special special shout out to um, Soulfully Famous. Uh, her her story is remarkable, um, folks. We are going to uh, uh, get into more of her um, story periodically um, during during the live. She is uh, back there cooking it up and and really ready uh, to tell her tale. So, Lady L, John Fetterman, eh? Yeah, yeah. I can't believe it. I I'm upset that he missed out on going to Enoch. As if they ain't got a, half the city going to their church. So I don't know. I don't know what that's going to mean for his election. I don't know what that's going to mean for, you know, the voter turnout or anything like that for him in particular. But I don't know. I guess I don't know. I don't know what this is going to look like for him. Yeah, yeah. I have no idea. But he already had bad press coming out of Philadelphia. Um, I don't know if you guys have heard some of the, the media blitz that goes around saying how he was like anti uh, certain legislation that would have helped. Uh, black men as far as like marijuana charges and things like that. Um, so yeah, uh, this is just not a good look for him. Yeah, um, um, to, um, yeah. yeah, we got a comment where Gary, mm -hmm. Gary said something. Gary says, uh, he says, uh, he heard that John Fetterman, he said he could not say, but he was pulled into an emergency meeting by the DOJ dealing with the Trump fake electors. Uh, the story will make the news tomorrow. Uh, and, and, and I, I hear that. And oh, when it does, we'll cover it. Yeah, yeah, you you know. Um, until this news but, is not news, brother. But yeah, yeah, exactly. Un, until then, you know, um, there there could be some kind of communication um, to to happen because this this story gets out because there's no communication. Right. The the communication happens when there's a level of respect. Hey, I can't make it. There's an emergency at the state. You can say that. Yeah, leave it at that. You're still a lieutenant governor. Hey, right. There's an emergency at the um, um, in the state. I can't make it. Can we reschedule? Like this, this, this story reads as a snub. Mm -hmm. As as look, okay, cool. You got pulled away, but you 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 had prior responsibilities. As a person in leadership, it is on you to make those contacts and say, hey, I can't make it because of X, Y, and Z. Because you would want that same grace extended to you. It's a microcosm of how the Democratic Party sees black people and our votes. That's right. all I'm going to say. That's you're, what that is. You're important until you're not. Right. Now right. I care about you today, and then as soon as I get your votes, we, we're not going to see him now in Philly. We're not going to see him after they vote him in. He's not going to give more money to the city. Is he going to give us some more money for some more nonviolent programs? Is he going to give us some more money for student leadership? Is he going to give us some more money for our school district? We're looking for a new superintendent. Is, the, or is he going to offer support? What's happening with all the schools? The state took over Philadelphia School District, I don't know, about 15 years ago. Those same schools that the state took over ain't doing much better than what they were doing before the state took over. So what did, what did the state do? What did the state do other than privatize our school system with a system that didn't do much better? And, so, and the thing is, unless the state is about to get bombed, can't this happen? Like, like, like you, you are still an active candidate. But can it wait yeah. till after the form? Uh, it, right, right. I, I, I'm just and 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 I understand oh, wait, wait. emergency. I get it, but. Nobody knew about said emergency, so was it life-threatening? Or could he have went? You know, then, then I'm thinking about the DOJ. You know, like, if, if there was a situation um, uh, where, where it, it was, um, let's say, the Catholic clergy, would they have said, all right, well, let's just reschedule this meeting and let's keep on going with this Catholic clergy because that's a big voting block. That's a big donation um, block as well. You know, you you do things. I'll just leave it at that because I don't want to get too I, I, I can say communication wasn't put out, though. All right? This could be the difference between winning the election and, and losing, losing the election. The negative, the negative effects of him. Go ahead, Sarge. I'm sorry. Thank you. Please. This could be the difference between winning and losing the whole election. Now, all, all press isn't good press. 
Right. You have negative press and you have positive. This is negative press. All right, the GOP wants to control the state. Boom. This is what you do. You put it out there. Lieutenant Governor snubbed a bunch of black clergymen. So you know what happens now? Now it's going to look like he's not going to get the black vote because he doesn't care about black people. All right, so let's... He, he may have communicated. We don't know. We see the stories that are put out, right? Go ahead, Todd. Sorry, Double O. Oh, I was going to reinforce what you were saying. The, the negative effects from them putting this story out without there being any actual reasoning for him to miss the, miss the meeting is going to kind of affect him negatively in the election. Whether you, whether you believe it or not, people will read this story and not read the next one. Right? And, um, and, and it says here that uh, Fetterman said he had to preside over the uh, state senate that day. Um, but to some of the uh, clergy who participated, it was a damaging snub. Uh, the kind that two other Democratic groups uh, say they've also experienced. So here's the thing. It's not a mistake. This is what he does. If there's shared stories of snubs, like this is a character thing that you do. Like, or mind you, this is still the same man that pulled a gun on a young black man. Let's not forget that. Lady L, you were going to say? Well, I was going to say we could, you know, be more positive about all of this and just say, you know what? He's a man who can't handle his calendar and just double booked himself. Didn't know he was supposed to be presiding over the state senate on the same day at the same time, even though some of these things are kind of scheduled out, I don't know, eight months in advance. And, 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 and as you're talking, I'm thinking, yo, yeah, because... I'm about to give y'all some uh, some some uh, business some game. business person game. Like like if if there's a person if there's a person that really 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 wants to meet with me, really really wants to meet with me, and 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 I'm like yo turning turning down this person, it's a bad look. But I really don't want to meet with this person because there's no real gain for me. What do I do? Meet with the person. Purposely double book. And say, ah, oh, man, you know what? I done, I done double booked. I can't make it. I hope we can do this some other time. And never give a set date for when the next time is. Because I don't want to meet with them. So because, be, 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 because uh, again, a value system. I what this person wants. I own viewer of the show. <laughs> No, no, none of the viewers. No, I, I, I love our viewers. No, I'm, 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 this is, this is just certain people around town, you know, m mostly people that want to pitch stuff. You know, hey, man, I got this idea about vampire dragons. When you want to meet? And it's like, I, I don't want to be known as a person that don't take pitches. Like, yeah, I'll listen to your pitch, you know, but, but. Purposely double book. And when I read this story, I hear purposely double book. That's why you missed our meeting last week. <laughs> yeah. No, right. don't 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 start that because now now, now America's gonna be like, yeah. oh, he purposely double booked oh, us. Don't oh. worry, he does it to me too. Be like, babe, you said we were gonna do a meeting. They be like, oh yeah, but I got this committee going. I'm sorry, it just came up. I do do it to Lady L. <laughs> <laughs> and then he'll sit and when it talks to me three hours later, and I'm like, sir, no. My She's office like, hours. <laughs> She's like, I have a meeting right here. I'm not invited. <laughs> Yo, I'm, I'm the worst. I'm the worst because it's like I'll get out of the shower, and it'll be like, boom, meeting. So, right, and I'm putting on my lotion. So, right, we got to do this for the revenue, and, we, and it's just like the worst. The worst. Yeah, so, um, that's not how this works. <laughs> it's, uh, it's terrible. My ADHD and his unorganization, it, I don't know how we make it work and we ain't pulled out each other's heads, but hey, it's organized chaos. Yeah. Um, but, um, uh, the, um, the one, um, uh, one thing I want to um, point out is that, um, the article says that Fetterman's campaign said his responsibilities presiding over. Uh, the Senate on their first day of the 2022 session made his attendance literally impossible. I've said that because you know what the date is. You know when the first day of, like, like you, you preside over that. And you know when the first day is purposely 
purposely, I just read it to feed my point. Right. Purposely double, double book. So, so what we're saying is, we're not saying don't vote for him, but we just gonna say he ain't gonna show up, you know, to your community when you need something. He'll purposely Listen. double book. Right. He'll purposely double book. Oh, we're having issues with our new school school board director. Don't call Featherman because he's going double book. Oh, you know, our Red Cross, we need some more plasma and other things. Oh, don't call Featherman because he's going to be double book. Double book. What would you say about like Philadelphia, Philadelphians? They're a lot of what? A lot of black Philadelphians are what? Um, they say they're liberal. We're, we're oh, they're, 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 they're conservatives. Are conservatives. <laughs> so they're already on the fence, is what I'm saying. Right. So when you don't show up, it makes it easier for them to be to like vote the other way. To, right. be, to go with what they really feel. Or or to vote for Malcolm Kenyatta. There you go. Because he's there. Yeah. Because he's there. I'm, yeah. I'm just saying, like, the brother shows up. He shows up. He even you know. showed up to Lancaster. Yes, to and TCP. He like, right, he was like, I didn't know no Lancaster guy was so loud. Like right, he, right. He was like, I didn't know y'all had these kind of black people. Us kind of yes. black people. Yes. Us. He, he was talking about us. <laughs> right. Now, I wasn't there because I was busy doing a black renaissance event because right. we just ultra black people over here. Yeah. That but yeah. Pulled up on us. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it, it was dope. But you know um, what? We got to have him back on the show. We yes. did it. We, we got to we'll send him an invite, invite. He does watch on IG every yes. now and then. Awesome. So, so um, so, um, uh, folks, um, we are, we are going to, uh, go ahead and, and check in, uh, with, with Ms. Sofully Famous. Um, see, see what she has, uh, cooking up, uh, back there in the kitchen man i i cannot wait um uh this uh this i feel like an old head by saying this this young lady but but i, I mean this this young she lady older than you uh no, no she, she lady oh, she, she she said she graduated high school in 2010 oh man yeah high school in 2010 in 2010 i was already set up in today's news <laughs> I was an old man by then. Meanwhile, <laughs> I'm two doors deep, PTSD, <laughs> deep, deep in the arm, like this is life. <laughs> right. Uh, so uh, to get to the comments before we uh, get get back to uh, uh, Ms. Sofully Famous, um, Rebecca says, this is really surprising. Uh, he, and especially his wife, uh, is really big about meeting with the people in the community. Uh, to that point, I really hear great things about his wife great fantastic things about her and the things that she's done um uh, uh, around the state um uh joel says uh right the philadelphia school district is still horrible rebecca says i was really disappointed that the event i was going to meet him at i had to be rescheduled i really wanted the opportunity to talk to him and giselle especially having met and talked to malcolm and i wonder if uh, one of the events that was mentioned in here, Rebecca, is one of the events that uh, you were uh, going to attend. Um, so, um, uh, Chiquita says, uh, wow, and says, and we love you. I'm assuming that she's talking about me. I'm, I'm, I'm just going to take that. Um, usually, you, usually it's for Lady L, but since there's no uh, disclaimer, I'm going to just say that it's for me. Chiquita, love you back. Uh, <laughs> uh, Gary, Gary says, um, uh, uh, Attorney General Garland uh, uh, Press talked about this uh, in his press conference yesterday, also in Washington Post today. Well, um, Gary, when that comes down our wires, we will report on it. Um, uh, Keisha says, y'all throwing shots, uh, y'all family. Nine to five, uh, and then uh, it says, uh, "Sarge, cut out the 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 sexy lip stuff, the sexy lip greasing." Oh, lip yeah, greasing. Uh, uh, cut out the sexy lip greasing. Yes, so that's underneath. Ain't chat. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know I did it sexy. <laughs> uh, Joel says, "I'm from Philly, but I'm a proud Philadelphian." That means that you're just an undercover conservative. My brother. <laughs> uh, Rebecca says, uh, Giselle is the best thing that could happen for the state. Oh, man. Um, uh, so, so um, um, uh, Sarge, I, I'm, I'm going to have to uh, leave, your, no. leave, leave the sexiness so and um, <laughs> check in on, on the kitchenness. She doesn't make me blush all day. <laughs> Let's go check oh, in with man. her. Let's go. But first, some more sexiness. <laughs> Oh, my God. Hey, you guys. Thank you guys for tuning in to TCP in the morning. Hey, you guys, this week I did want to remind you guys, 
Friday, we will be with the people. We will be with our lovely black lady doctors. Sorry. The women of patients are waiting for the Music and Health Equity Festival. All right, the vaccine drive be giving out, so be sure to come out. Also, don't forget, if you are not, okay. if you don't have health insurance, okay. get covered with Penny. We're nine out of ten Pennsylvanians okay. qualify for health insurance. All right, they have all kinds of things. We talk about a low deductible and all the other great stuff that comes along with it. All right, so you guys stay tuned. Um, yeah, I'm having, having a good time. All right, so we're going to go over to Soulfully Famous right now. So take it over. Okay. Hello, how y'all doing again? So, um, like I said, we're already washed up and ready to go. Um, I've already started some of the process. So, um, this is the appetizer section. And like I said, we're going to be doing the fried cabbage spring roll. Um, so, what I have here, we've already started. Um, sauteing up the carrots, the red cabbage, and the white cabbage. So, um, word of advice is when you're sauteing, you always want to make sure that you put the thicker items in first. So I tried to keep it as sectioned as possible so that way you guys could see. But um, you want to do your carrots first. Throw them in first two to three minutes before you add your red cabbage because that's thicker than a white cabbage. Then you go straight to the white cabbage. Um, I've already um, put in some garlic as well. So garlic is always last, okay? You don't want to add the garlic in the beginning because it burns fast. So just remember that. Um, you know, if you want to get a little fancy, you're trying to get a little cute, and you want to add peppers, you do the peppers first, then the carrots, then the red cabbage, then the white cabbage. So like I said, this has been cooking for a little bit while you guys um, were getting your story. Um, so this is almost about done, but since we're doing an Asian oriental style, um, we're going to add some dressing because when you bite into that spring roll, you're going to want, you're going to want a little juice. You're going to want a little drip get off on the, on the, on the lip there. So, um, I like to use, uh, Ken's, uh, I've been using Ken's for a long time since I was a kid when McDonald's was having them. I don't know if McDonald's still do that cause I don't want to eat McDonald's, but, um, you want to go for something light, do not go over something thick because it's just going to overpower the mm -hmm. vegetable. How did you come to that? Like, what made you get to that? Like, did you have to do a bunch of taste testing? Like, that's, I feel like you have to, like, you know, to come up with the perfect mix. Like, you have to make it a lot. Um, well, some of it is common sense, but sometimes uh, common sense isn't common. But um, I don't know. I guess me working in a, you know, the culinary field for so for so long, you know, what type of vegetable, you know, what type of sauces and stuff you want to use with the vegetables. You don't want to do anything too heavy because we're working with cabbage here, so you don't want to do too much. But it is trial and error a lot of times, especially with just the egg roll itself, okay? Um, I feel a lot of times doing these egg rolls, uh, for some reason, um, these are deep fried. So you automatically think, just throw them right in the deep fryer. No, don't do that. You always shallow fry, okay? I've learned the long way. So... This is already done, and um, don't be afraid to season, okay? So I haven't seasoned this at all. I just added the carrot, the red, and white cabbage, okay? So season is the reason, and we always want to make sure that we just add a little bit because, so this is onion powder here, a um, little bit of garlic salt, and um, complete seasoning. So that's all you really need. You don't need too much. I personally like a little spice in my life, so I add red peppers to my mixture so this is done and that's going to be the inside right there oh i almost forgot it's looking a little us us chefs we like color so what do you think is missing in there what kind of color you think green, green. green. boom yeah. there we go that's all i need to hear so we had a little green onions and that just already looks pretty already um especially when we're working on oriental oriental dishes um green onion is their main too so this is this is done you want to cool this down. You do not want to put any filling in your egg roll hot because it just messes up the wrapper itself, and we don't want that. So we take that off the heat, we put that in a bowl, put it in the refrigerator, let it cool down, and then we fast forward. And I already have a mixture already. So this has already been cooled down. It's already cool, and it's ready to go in the wrapper. Um, here's my egg roll wrappers. Here's a pack just in case you guys are interested in, you know, buying some because these are perfect gifts, uh, perfect meal to make for uh, your loved one for Valentine's Day because we all want to eat, you know what I'm saying? Yes. Restaurants are going to be booked up 
and you're not gonna be able to get in. Mm -hmm. So just mix up yourself. And to be honest, it's gonna taste better. So um, these come in square, but you wanna think diagonal. You you wanna think diamond. So you wanna have it shaped like that. And it's not a time to be stingy, okay? These egg rolls need to be filled up. I hate anything filled that's not filled. So we wanna make sure that we put as much in there as possible. And then you always wanna have your water. Sometimes, even when um, the empanadillas, you wanna make sure you have water because you need a seal. So this creates that seal. So we just do that like that. And this is a trick, y'all. Get it? Fold it like that. And then you tuck these ends. That's how you wanna do that to make sure nothing leaks out for the most part. So boom, and then you just get your roll on. And that's pretty much that. Y'all know how to roll. I know some of y'all know how to roll real well, okay? <laughs> so, and that's just your egg roll right there. So I've, I've done a few, and those are when they look, they look really good. They look like some Chinese store stuff right now. We about to hook it up. So you just go ahead, and you just keep going. It's like some soulfully famous stuff right there. Hey, listen. This one got a little spice in it, because like I had said, I like a little spice in my life, so I hope TCP is okay with that, because, yeah. So, I just wanted to show you guys this. Um, you don't want to have any excess. That just really messes up the egg roll. Plus, when you put that bad boy in the fryer, it's going to be getting crazy. So, just make sure you don't want to have any liquid that you don't need. And to be honest with you, that's really all I need for the seal. So, you kind of want to improvise, uh, imp um, improvise sometimes whenever you don't have what you need on hand. So boom, that's our liquid. And um, I also had forgot to mention when I was frying up the cabbage that, please wash your vegetables. A lot of y'all not washing y'all vegetables and it's nasty. <laughs> <laughs> Just wash your vegetables, okay? Especially the red cabbage, because the red cabbage bleeds and you don't want that getting in your mixture. Um, even during the cooking process, your red cabbage is going to bleed, but this blends in with the uh, mixture itself, so you don't really have to worry too much. But um, I, if you go on my page, a lot of you guys follow me already. I did a video where I washed my red cabbage. I washed several heads, and I pulled that red cabbage out, the whole water, pink, red, and it's the dye. It's all the stuff that they put in our food. So it's very, very important to wash your vegetables. And back in the day, you used to be able to wash your vegetables with cold water. Don't do that no more. Watch it with warm water. Get all that stuff off. Get all that pesticides, whatever they're spraying on there. Vinegar, lemon, lime, and just wash it because it's very important. Um, don't just go ahead and bite the apple. Don't do it. Don't do it. So um, we're all straight here, and uh, we're ready to fry. So these are the egg rolls that we have, and we're going to get frying. So Okay, great. So we're going to fry as well. I'm so excited. I already have the oil going a bit. Like I said, if you want to look in the camera here, you'll see that is shallow oil there. Do not put a lot of oil in there. Please don't because for some reason, the wrappers get undone. But if you really want to get that full deep fry effect and you don't want to listen to me, then at least freeze them first or put them in the refrigerator so that way it could lock that seal in. Um, so we'll just put maybe two in. Don't get scared, it's only oil, y'all. Y'all know y'all be stepping back, but it's okay, it's okay. But uh, this goes back to moisture. More moisture, more popping, so. And that's that's the pop you hear. So don't be scared, it's just, it's just the oil, you gonna live. And we got that frying. And it already smells, looks good. Um, you get it nice and golden brown on both sides. So you're gonna fry it down the first side, then flip it over and fry onto the next side. So. It smells okay. so good. People can't smell it. Like you can see it, you can't smell it. Yeah. Right. I When I do my videos, I'm like, uh, no, I'm, if I'm only they could know. Checking to see how it is. <laughs> if only they could really smells. understand. We know now. I just love food so much. If I wasn't doing it uh, for the money, I would do it. You know, be just doing it in general because it's just something that's been a part of my life for so long. I just, I just can't help. But um, I flipped a little too early, but that's okay. It's up to your discretion of, you know, the goldenness of the egg wrapper. Yeah, but um, they're pretty much done. On you want to take a look here? Um, these are your egg rolls, okay? 
These are your egg rolls. Um, I did start off a few already. So that's what you're looking for right there. That's what you're looking for. Nice golden brown on both sides. Okay, and then we're going to bust this bad boy open so you can see the juices run. And that is the first segment, the appetizer. This is the spring roll cabbage uh, Asian style. And super delicious. We'll just. This is for my vegetarians, for my vegans. Y'all want to eat too? Y'all want to eat good too? So, boom, been a little fancy. Get yourself a plate. And do it how the restaurants be doing. Okay? You want to cut on the diagonal if you really want to get fancy how the restaurants do it. Cut on the diagonal. Let the meat get up in there. Well, vegetables. And there, there that is right there. Don't forget, add a little color. Color. Always cute. And y'all are more than welcome to give this a go. Like, mm, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, y'all enjoy, so enjoy that. So that's the first part. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, come back and check me out for the second part. We're going to work on that Rasta pasta. And, yeah, it's going to be good. It's going to be good. Thank you. Right. Oh, man. So <laughs> how many courses are you going to be making today? How many courses? Yeah, We're going to just do three. I don't want to do too much. I don't want to do too much. Uh, so that first one, that was our appetizer. We're going to be doing the entree, and we're going to be doing dessert. Um, my dessert, I want to do something special. So we're going to be doing the Peach Fosters. So we're gonna, it's going to get lit, literally. I'm gonna, I got the flame, boom. All we're right. going to do it. Thank you. We'll be right, all right back. All right, all right, guys. I hope that you enjoyed it. I know you did. I know you did because I saw the comments. I saw the comments. Yes, no grease. Uh, somebody said that they could smell it. <laughs> smell it. smell a vision Right, right. We've been talking about smell vision for, for decades now, and I'm glad to know that we are, have finally arrived. Um, so yes, yes, guys, thank you for watching, thank you for tuning in. Hey, listen, share the stream, and you can actually try out some of Soulfully Famous's food yourself this Friday if you come on down to the Christmas Addicts Community Center for the Health Equity Now Music Festival, and it's going to be Latin night. So I, I'm not too sure what the menu's going to be. Maybe we can ask her before the show's over and find out. Until then, guys, we're going to keep this party going and flowing, and I have your next news story. Uh, Krispy Kreme will provide a dozen free glazed donuts to anyone who can prove they donated blood from this past Monday, which I believe was like the 22nd or something like that, through the end of January. Uh, the promotion follows an announcement from the Red Cross earlier this month that it is facing its worst blood shortage in more than a decade. Over the course of the pandemic, blood donations and blood drives have dropped off significantly, a problem that's been compounded in recent weeks by severe winter weather. The Red Cross provides nearly 40% of the nation's blood supply, but donations are down 10% since March of 2020. College and high school blood drives have dropped 62% during a pandemic, the organization says. So in recent weeks, the Red Cross says it's had to limit blood distributions to hospitals as a result of the shortage. At times, the organization says it's up to a quarter of hospital blood needs are not being met. Wow. So the scan supply has left doctors to make decisions on which patients need blood transfusions immediately and which must wait until more supply is available. Blood and pallet donations are especially necessary for cancer patients accident victims, and those with blood disorders, such as sickle cell disease. So you know what? The people at Krispy Kreme have stepped up. So listen, at Krispy Kreme, people can prove they gave blood by showing their donation sticker or confirmation of donation in the Red Cross Blood Donor app. All types of blood are needed, especially O positive and O negative, according to the Krispy Kreme announcement. It's not the first time Krispy Kreme has thrown its hat into the ring, or should we say donut, amid a public health crisis. After the FDA granted full approval for the COVID-19 vaccine in August, Krispy Kreme offered two free donuts to vaccination card holders uh, between August 31st and September 5th of 2021. The company also offered one free donut daily for the rest of the year. Next month, Oh, next month, 
<laughs> Another company will offer thank you items to blood donors, according to a statement provided to NPR by the Red Cross. In February, those who donate blood, plasma, or pallets uh, with the Red Cross will be emailed a $10 Amazon gift card. Let me tell you why. You ain't getting none of my juice for a gift card or a donut. And we shouldn't even be eating donuts in the first place. So you're going to give me something that you told me that I'm not supposed to be eating anyway. How much sense does that make? And I don't want $10 to give to Jeff Bezos so he can make another <laughs> rocket to the moon. No. No. And Red Cross, I'm sorry. Where are you at with Haiti? Okay. Yeah. I'm going to keep my be positive blood right here. <laughs> Over to the best. Uh <laughs> Go ahead, Sarge. I'm good. Good. I know y'all still look. You know, I like got the donuts. I like Krispy Kreme donuts. <laughs> uh, I, I do want to say something, though, real quick. You know, we just ate that uh, that roll, and that was so amazing. It was so amazing. Yeah, I just had to put that out so there real good. quick. <laughs> we can't eat on camera, right, because it's not professional. <laughs> it don't look good. Right, but it was so, so good. <laughs> but, uh, no, I think this is a good thing. You know, um, not, as many, not as many people are going to donate blood as much anymore, you know? So this is a good way to get people out, you know? Why not? Well, also, the article said that um, hospitals and what they're doing is they're kind of just deciding who gets who gets to get the blood first. And they're just kind of sitting there, meeting at the table. Netflix has a little movie show about this thing right now going on. Yeah. Um, and they got to sit there and make a decision on which patient's going to get the, the liver, which patient's going to get the transfusion, which... You know, and they got to decide. Looking at your lifestyle, looking at your family, do you have a job, how much do you make? Really just essentially saying... Black people don't qualify. <laughs> right, we ain't making it in that room, y'all. And that's just all I'm saying. That's why my be positive is staying right here with me. Because you can't guarantee me that my blood's going to go to somebody who looks like me. And especially with having had a, a, somebody in my life who has sickle cell anemia, I'm, I'm all for giving blood. But I also know that there are a number of people who look like me who won't get it. And that then becomes my concern. I'm afraid to give away my blood. My blood has vibranium in it. <laughs> so I'm, I'm, I'm afraid that there's going to be another I superhero. I can't. <laughs> <laughs> I used to be here. so afraid because um, my mom, my mom had a rare blood type. She, her and Henrietta Lacks actually had the same rare blood type. Oh, man. R RH negative. Well, I got to check. Got to check the kids now. No, no, no. Kids are all be positive. Everybody has my blood type. All be positive. All be positive. So if you're ever like, how is she so literally my blood type? It's be positive. Be positive. That's, oh, yeah? That's, that's why I am positive. It's in my blood. Mine literally. is rock and roll. <laughs> one thing I want to say about this is this is one of the unintended consequences of the pandemic, man. Like these are yeah. one of the things that we didn't we didn't foresee coming because we didn't expect this pandemic. I mean, you can't prepare for it, but the one thing we didn't see or one thing we don't know is what's going to happen, you know, five, ten years from now from not being able to go out, from not being able to donate blood. There are still going to be, you know, like I said, unintended consequences for uh for, from this pandemic for years to come. So this, right. is, just, this is just one of those small things. Um, um, Mary Gaddis says, if you haven't had a Krispy Kreme straight off the line, you haven't lived just saying, yo, straight up. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. We used to, um, we used to uh, go to the uh, little Krispy Kreme store around, around midnight um, just, just to get the fresh off the line. Um, we also have um, Keisha. Keisha says, will it be us? Nyla says, John Q. That's exactly what I was thinking about. Um, and then um, Gary. Gary says, speaking of blood, I had a privileged white guy tell me that because of his blood type, he cannot get COVID. Pfizer <laughs> should give these privileged white men five blue pills for blood. Yo. <laughs> Yo. Yeah. He must have vibranium in his blood as well. But I'm still going uh, to, to get... Uh, uh, my shot and boosted and all of that because, um, hey, of you know, science. <laughs> just I mean, just I, saying. I used to be scared to get my blood taken. Like, you know, I'm like, eh, I, don't want, I don't want people to have my blood. <laughs> I'm me. You know, I'm like, yeah, and then people will know that kryptonite's my weakness. <laughs> <laughs> but, oh, man, like, let's keep this thing rolling. Yes, it yes. Rolling. Um, uh, it it um, uh, says here that um, um, many factors, uh, we... 
talked about this before, but uh, many factors are causing the shortage, um, including canceled blood drives uh, due to illness and staffing limitations um, and an active flu season. Uh, Weather-related closures have also prevented um, some blood drives from taking place. Uh, a surge in COVID-19 cases uh, could have also contributed to the ongoing uh, shortage, according to Red Cross. And, and, and also, just, just think about the times. Like, like, for the past two years, we have been in this, in this pandemic. People just may not be in a giving spirit. You know, like, like it's, it, it, it may be something that just isn't on the forefront of their minds. Like, if there's not these blood drives to remind you, like, oh, there's this blood drive this weekend. I'm going to go donate some blood. If there's not that, then, then you don't have that, um, that, that in the forefront but of also your mind. Pe people with COVID, too. Like, there's just been a lot of people that got COVID. And they're probably just not donating blood thinking it could be dangerous. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. I'm sorry, lady. Very well, true. If you have a uh, well nothing. I was going to say that, but also with all of these genetically altered things going on and it seems like part of the science community is turning into mad scientists. Um, I think that maybe we don't, they need to find, they can GMO the blood. There we go. Solutions, Lady L. <laughs> Somebody go call uh, Bill Gates, because that's my idea. GMO the blood. It, it, we literally, and I don't know if we're gonna get to this story, but the, the, the pig kidneys and everything like that. Um, don't forget that sheep that they uh, cloned all those 40, 50 years ago. It couldn't be 40 years ago because I was still alive. Right. The sheep that yeah. they cloned. No, you don't need my blood. You can go make some. Uh, I'm convinced. I'm, I, don't, I don't. If they wanted to, they could. You're trying I to tell me that blood. you can clone a sheep, but you can't make blood. I don't. I don't. You, I you don't can put. You can put. I don't want makeup blood. But in, you can in, put. In you can put animal parts in my body and supplement them for my human parts. Yeah, but those those are real animal parts. It's not like they said, "Yo, let's create." But the blood is made from something was real at some point. Yeah, but you're talking about just manufactured blood and then pumping it into people. But if we're doing that to our food. Isn't it going to get into our bloodstream anyway? They can't even get synthetic oil right. So now we're going to get synthetic <laughs> blood right? I mean, maybe. That's I mean, a, that's, 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 a, that's, a, that's a huge, I, I mean. That's a bridge I, I won't cross. Right, right, right. And, 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 and like to like speak in like actualities uh, um, and, and, and everything. Um, uh, when, when, when you donate, like. Like you're 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 saving you're saving somebody's life. You're potentially saving somebody's life. Um, it's it it's a shame that this is even even a thing that there's even a shortage because even before this shortage, Red Cross always talked about there's a blood shortage. There's a blood shortage. There's a blood shortage. And then there's folks like me, who would love to donate but can't because of my iron count. I'm anemic, so they're not going to take my blood. You know what I mean? If uh, um, I, I'm not too sure uh, about the whole tattoo thing, but um, if, if you had a tattoo, you couldn't give blood. So like, they also did this to themselves with the parameters that they set forth. But Lady L, to your point, um, manufactured blood, not on board with that. Well, Keisha's on board. <laughs> <laughs> she definitely said, uh, what did, what did she say? I'm trying to. Uh, she Keisha said, um, "I swear, L thinks like me." Just, we had just, we on the same court. I mean, y'all 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 two women from Philly. <laughs> yes. 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 <laughs> yes. Yes. We saw that coming a mile away. Y'all just digitally high five yourselves. <laughs> yes, yes, queen. Girl. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Right. So I represent -I. <laughs> L L Y. Yeah. Well, uh, look, all up because here's the thing, and I appreciate you saying that, right? You know, not taking people that had a, like because they won't do that. If you have uh, liver disease, kidney disease, and other diseases, low iron, um, and other other things, they won't take your blood, mm -hmm. which then knocks out a boatload of people. Who might be interested in giving blood, but you already done told them no. Yeah, I can't get my donuts. 
That's what I'm mad about. I can't get my daughter. I'm, about, my to, thing I'm is, about to send you so we can get a free 12. I'm trying to help them find <laughs> solutions. And we can't all be in small, close quarters together, you know, so how can we get some blood? What if I take it myself and deliver it? The unintended consequences of the pandemic. Man. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and I really feel as though that there's going to be a lot more of that for like decades to come. We don't even know what's gonna happen. The damage that those two years in the house. Right. Um, I don't I, have, I don't it, it, it is interesting because I'm not gonna lie, I thought about women and their menstruation. Like that's blood that ends up in the trash. <laughs> I mean, just thinking of ways that we can what make fake blood? You can filter or real goodness. blood. I mean we're gonna, the, are, we gonna, are we gonna filter it? <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> Bring it out. <laughs> uh, <let's laughs> Yo, you you are on the slippery slope. <laughs> oh, there's nothing so, slippery about it. It got real strong in here. <laughs> so, oh my goodness, so hold on, Chiquita, Chiquita, fake blood. Nope. Next, we'll be seeing those commercials at two a.m. Yep, yep. Were you giving fake blood? <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah. You were in line for some kind of compensation. Yep. Pfizer has set aside $18 million for the GMO blood lawsuit that happened between 2022 and 2035. You, you, you talk about the real zombie... Uh, um, uh, um, uh, um, uh, 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 yes. yes. That, yes. That's, that's, that's what it is. The fake blood. That's what it is. Wasn't but I is a there... legend fake blood? <laughs> it might have been. I, I, it, it was something. But um, uh, uh, no, folks... No, no. Um, I legend was the cure to cancer. Was that what that was? You're that got on Unbrite Sick? Um, we got it on DVD. We're going to go watch it and come back and tell y'all what happened. Y'all trust Sarge. Y'all going to make Donald No, 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 <laughs> no. Tell me what, what? No. Cause, cause because you, you aren't the movie, movie buff that we... No, nah, I'm just playing. Because you didn't see Spider-Man? Yeah. Yes, because you didn't see Spider-Man. How can you be a movie buff and you didn't see Spider-Man? He doesn't go to movie theaters. Who? He well, needs he needs the link. Get this man the link. <laughs> oh my goodness. I remember when we went to like the late night showing. What movie did we go see at midnight? We went to go see a Marvel. We went to go see end games at midnight. Yeah. Came out the theater like 2 30 in the morning, turned around, and still had to be at work at 6 a.m. Yeah. I fall asleep at theaters. Ah. The seats have gotten way too comfy over the years. <laughs> yeah. Dark it, places it, and comfy chairs. Is, no good for me. Go to innovation bed. wasn't good for movie theaters. <laughs> I'm about to made it more like a house. George Stanza out on a bet when it comes to being with yourself. <laughs> I'm out. Uh, so, um, so folks, uh, we are going to go uh, check in with uh, Ms. So Fully Famous. Uh, see, see how she's doing. Uh, see what she got uh, cooking up back there. Um, uh, so, while we uh, get get her uh, segment, well, get her pre prepared to jump back on camera. Uh, Lady L, can you tell the folks about this? Friday, please. Yes. Um, listen, guys. They called me a little off guard because I was saying something to y'all in the comments. Y'all going to see it? It was me. It's, I, we eating them GMOs. That's all I'm going to say, but y'all know it was me. So listen, guys. If you are enjoying uh, Soulfully Famous in our kitchen, cooking it up, chefing it up with Soulfully Famous, if you are enjoying it, come on down to Christmas Addicts this Friday. She will be in the kitchen this Friday, serving up some, some deliciousness for Latin Night of the Health Equity Music Now Festival. So come on down to Christmas Addicts, and you can, like I said, come get a plate or a platter. They're all reasonably priced. They're delicious. I know she's had these chicken skewers that were on point, these empanadillas that were on point. Um, oh my goodness, the collard greens, the black eyed peas, the red beans and rice, like, these are just some of the items that I've had of hers over these last couple of weeks, and they have all hit. And you know what? Not just that, but the kids love it, too. And you know, it's hard to get kids to eat. So let's go ahead and see what she got going on over here in the kitchen. Oh, yeah, Lisa, that mac and cheese, girl, yes. Okay, yes. welcome back again. So, um... You know, we just recently just did our appetizer section and now we're working on the entree. So we're doing the rasta pasta, okay? Um, so I just took the liberty of, yes, enjoy those. Let me know what you think. Okay. Um. <laughs> yes, so um, I just took the liberty of starting already um, for the rasta pasta. So 
we, we're going to start on the protein first. We're going to do the meat first because we have salmon and shrimp. And then always when you're cooking your salmon, you want to sear presentation side down because when you flip it, it's got to look like something. And plus, um, you start off with a hot pan that'll create a nice sear. So that's what you want to do. So we have all our salmon. And you can tell, too, because this is um, the back skin on the salmon. So we always want to start presentation side down. This is like kind of the, the end of the salmon, but... That, that's down and then also you know when it's time to flip it won't stick if it's nice and hot so I'm just gonna continue to put the rest of the shrimp in here and uh, so we can get this going now is the time to chef it up y'all so you can turn the heat up okay it's okay don't be scared so we're gonna try to get as much in here as possible And the more food you add, the higher you kind of want. How is it? <laughs> y'all should see them. <laughs> y'all, you guys should see their face. They're just like. <laughs> it's, I'm glad. It, I'm glad you guys like it. I had people buying those um, by the roll because I, when I uh, first started out, because uh, thanks to. Uh, Everybody, Soulfully Famous has grown because of you guys. Um, I was starting off real small. I was doing platters, um, just selling here and there during the pandemic because I was bored. And um, I had just recently had a baby. And I love cooking. So people were hungry. I can cook. And I was just selling, I was just selling platters. And then it just grew and grew and grew. People were like, oh, I got to get that again. I got to get I'm like, calm down. So it just got to a point where... Um, I had to move to a, a commercial kitchen, and then I had to become licensed and insured. And it actually took me, I say like around a month to even come up with the name because, you know, I hate to say it's like stereotypical, but black people, we always do soul food. So I'm like, oh, I gotta do something soul. I gotta, so it took me forever to come up with the name. I'm like, what am I gonna, when I typed in soul, all this soul st stuff came up, so I'm like, Soul, soulfully, soulfully, soul. I'll start looking. And I didn't, nobody had soulfully famous. So I was like, this is it. This is me. Because people always love my food. So this gotta, this gotta, this gotta go. So um I digress, but thank you guys so much because my business has grown. Because of you, word of mouth has been amazing for me. Um, I've been blessed to, I guess we'll okay. Um so this is starting to stick here, but that's okay. Don't be afraid. Just keep going and give them a go. So normally, whichever, wherever the middle is, it sticks the most because that's where the, the heat conducts. But we're just going to continue to cook the rest of these shrimp here and make sure everything is thoroughly cooked. But um, as I was saying, um, I've been blessed enough to not have to look for places to go. People have been reaching out to me, so uh, that that makes me feel really good that uh, you know people are talking, people are watching and listening, and and you know really thoroughly enjoy my food. So thank you guys so much. Uh, it means so much to me. Um, currently looking for a place to lease. Um, I was gonna do the food truck thing but um over some time trials and tribulations and giving it a go on the truck I just noticed that I'm too big to be on a truck okay <laughs> that thing get the wobbling and the moving and I get the scooting and, the, and then my menu is just too large so um hopefully famous is looking for a building so that way we can give our customers the food that they deserve you know at a stationary location permanent stationary location so that's what we're working on please be patient um in the meantime you guys know um if there's anything that you want me to prepare for you or um you guys need an event that you want me to be at feel free to hit me up on my social medias email address hopefully famous everything just type it in oh boom i'll pop up so so i have a question yeah have you ever thought about selling a dish to like maybe a restaurant like like you know even a big chain restaurant have you ever thought about that listen I go where the money go. So, <laughs> so if they want it, they talking turkey, baby, I'm talking chicken. All right? So let's do it. Let's do it. 
Um, now, I will say absolutely that has definitely that would definitely be something that I'm interested in because um, I am known for the uh, honey butter fried chicken. People will go nuts over that. So in the event that somebody like, hey, Lori, we want to buy your honey butter sauce. Show me the money, baby. Show me the money. Have you been in contact with the Southeast Market yet? I have. I actually reached out to them uh, months during the construction. And unfortunately, it's just something that is not in the uh, works for me right now. Um, they are partnered up with a company called Assets. And Assets requires you to go through a incubation program. With everything that I have going on with Socially Famous, it's just not um, something that I'm able to do right now. But the good thing about Southeast Market is um, the cooks are on a rotation. So in the event um, that there is an opportunity for me to get in there in the future, I'm definitely, definitely interested. I've spoke to several people about it. Um, I would love to be in there. I would love to get more people to try my food. But um, they decided to go with someone else. Um, but in the event that you guys are actually interested in somebody that lives here locally, I will be that person for you. Okay, so just let me know. Y'all got my credentials. Y'all, y'all, y'all got my handles. Come hit me up. All right. So this is actually looking pretty good right about now, and um, you know the entree part normally takes more time than anything because you you want to cook this thing below. But as you can see, the shrimp are shrinking up. Um, our Salmon is looking nice and tender. We want to press on it, make sure it's not raw, okay? And um, this one stuck a little bit, but that's okay because it tastes amazing. So you, that's what you want to look for. You want to start pressing on that meat. Don't press too hard. You don't want to squeeze any juices out. And um, yeah, we need all this good stuff down here at the bottom too. So I'm gonna show you what we gonna do with that once we get the salmon out. So we're gonna take the shrimp out because they don't take too long to cook. And we're gonna be throwing them back in anyway. So. While the salmon is still cooking, we'll take the shrimp out. We don't like, and these are our presentation shrimp. I put the biggies, put the biggies up there. Yep. So that way. Talking about movies and her food. So, yeah, I'm definitely excited for Southeast Market, regardless if I'm not in there or not. Um, you know, one thing that I love about Lancaster is that we support our small businesses. Um, so uh, kudos to the chefs that were able to get in there. I'm definitely going to be up in there. Okay, because I heard they got wine. So I'll be there, and I'm excited to try uh, other people's food, you know. Everybody, everything ain't for everybody. So um, I can't wait to see, you know, what flavors they have introduced in there. And you never know, it, it could add some things to my, to my book, you know what I mean? Because everything just gets better. Everything just gets better with time. I don't know everything. There's always more, there's always more flavor profiles, always more styles more of everything. So with that being said, uh, yeah, well, time will tell. That's what, that's what we'll say, time will tell. Um, do you mind getting me a plate from over there? All right, so. <laughs> Sorry, uh, you can all right, so you looking at this food, looking at this shrimp here. Yes. All right. And we're gonna start adding the vegetables very soon. What do you say one of the biggest mistakes people make when they make their shrimp and their salmon? The big one, overcooking, just mm -hmm. um, overcooking it is definitely the biggest one. You don't want to leave it on too long. And then another common mistake, and it's kind of not your fault, is is sticking, sticking to the pan. You want to make sure you have a good pan. And sometimes, you know, people got to do what they got to do. So you just do the best that you can, and, and the worst, and the rest will fall in place. So this stuff right here, a lot of people tend to throw this stuff away. But throw it out the window, why don't we? Um, a lot of people tend to, to throw these things away, but you don't want to do that. You want to probably take out the burnt stuff, but this is called the fond. The fond is at the flavoring at the bottom of a pan. This is at any basic um, beginning of any sauces that you see in those high quality restaurants. They always cook the meat and then they use the fond to create um, the sauce with those flavorings. So that's what we're gonna do. Um, we got some peppers here our rasa pasta and we're just going through them and we got orange we got red and we got green make it nice and colorful so we're just going to throw these in no rhyme or reason and um you know we're doing jamaican so it don't matter with burn anyway we just call it a jerk 
We just call it Cajun. <laughs> so we'll just throw that in there. Somebody's trying to order. I know. <laughs> it's my dad. <laughs> I know he's probably watching. Dad, hang up the phone. <laughs> 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 so that's what we're doing right now. We're getting all that in there. Both. So uh, we'll just add a little bit more oil in there because it's starting to uh, absorb to the pan. We want to get these nice and sauteed. Um, so both. So I actually, uh, I went to school in Coastville. I lived in Philadelphia. And um, I didn't know what I was going to do because I, I love writing as well. So if I wasn't cooking, I was writing. Um, I wanted to be a journalist. I wanted to write plays, books, all types of stuff. So. Um, I was concerned about making money as well. I wanted to make sure that but whatever I did, I was also going to be making money. So I loved to cook. So I was like, you know what? You know, I could cook. I, I could cook in a restaurant. I, could, I can make money doing that. So I, started, I decided to go with that. And when I started looking for schools, I seen that the culinary, they didn't have both mixed together. They had either, you had cooking, culinary, or restaurant management. I wanted both so that way I could be able to have knowledge to be able to run my own business. So that was really the struggle that I felt um, that I that I ran into look, when looking for a culinary school. So thankfully, I did find one, which was YTI, um, formerly hey. known as Hey YTI. Everybody goes there. Ah. <laughs> um, formerly known as the Pennsylvania School of Culinary Arts for um, the culinary side, and I went there. They had culinary arts and restaurant management, so it kind of just you know mushed everything back together. And so that's kind of where most of my um, formal training comes from to answer your question is my culinary background in school. But to be honest, and I'm going to tell everybody this, don't waste your money. Okay? Don't waste your money. Um, calling, uh, going to culinary school, you know what it taught me? It taught me terms, basic terms, uh, foundations, and history. A lot of the stuff that I know now is putting that work in on the line and messing up. You know what I mean? Um, I'm not perfect. I've had people tell me stuff is too salty. I have a heavy hand, so I apologize if I salted your tongue. I'm sorry, but um, I don't like bland food. Um, so it just comes with, uh, you know, messing up. Unfortunately, you have to do a lot of messing up to get it right. So um, yeah, that, that's kind of where, where I'm at with it. So around this time, you can begin to add, because you can see the onions are starting to get translucent. and um, the peppers are starting to soften up around. So around this time, you can add your garlic because uh, I remember speaking on this, um, the appetizer section. Don't add the garlic too soon because when you do that, it burns. So that's when you add the garlic. And actually, I'm a garlic person, and garlic is very healthy for you. So we could add a little bit more. That's okay. <laughs> Okay, Just add a little bit more. I uh, had seen this meme on um, For Us By Us page and on Facebook, and it says, black people, they add peppers and garlic, fresh peppers and garlic to everything, and then add onion powder and garlic powder. <laughs> That's just the way it is. We're going to be doing that here, too, okay? We got fresh onion and garlic in here, and we're going to add garlic powder. <laughs> And onion powder, because we got to. Uh, so. Well, yeah, uh, uh, hopefully we are going to wrap up the show. Okay. Okay. No idea. Yes. Our, um, outro. All right. Thank you. All right, everybody. So, as you guys see, your know, Sophie Famous is in there chefing it up. And that food smells amazing. All right, so uh, after we get, before we get back there, we got some more stories we have to get to. All right, no, no more stories. Oh, we got 10 minutes left. All right, so um, you guys, thank you guys for tuning in today to TCP in the morning. You know, we, uh, we tried to have a great show. We, we did have a great show today. First time we've had a live chef in studio guest cooking and chefing it up for us. So Philly Famous is really, she really set the standard today. She really set the standard. You know, so um, appreciate you guys for tuning in and following that, following that. We got to enjoy them, them egg rolls so far. And I, we're going to let you know what that pasta tastes like as well. 
Absolutely. You know, so. Absolutely. Um, uh, Chiquita uh, says, um, Spider-Man and Sophie Famous movie dinner night. Um, yes. Yes. Let's make that happen. Uh, ASAP. Um, tune in to TCP in the morning for the announcement, uh, for the official announcement for it. Um, so, folks, unfortunately, we are right up on that time where we need to depart. But first, Lady L. Hey, all. Thank you for watching. Thank you for tuning in to another edition of TCP in the morning. Hey, listen, if you are looking for more episodes of TCP in the morning, you're tired of scrolling through our Facebook page, go on ahead and visit our YouTube page where you can find TCP news breaks as well as full shows. And there's even uh, music news and reviews with Trinice on there as well. So go on ahead and visit our YouTube page. Um, guys, listen, thank you for watching and tuning in. Uh, go on ahead and share the stream. Make sure that next time you come to our page that you're watching with a friend. Uh, also, make sure that you always say good morning and that you just comment in the comment section. All right. And before I go, I'm going to say the same thing I said to you earlier today. You are not a minority. Black people have cultural influence over the mainstream alongside their economic power and innovation has long established them as the foundation to mankind. And logically, people who are of the global majority can't be considered minorities. Taken out of one of our beloved banned books from CRT over to the desk. There it is. All right, all right, all right. I think I might switch up my voice today. All right. I might bring it down a little deeper. <laughs> oh, snap. I want to try and get on double O status. <laughs> Nighthawk. Listen, so ladies, gentlemen, boys, girls, he, she, they, we, we baby. All of you out there, kings, queens, princes, and princesses, dolls and doll babies, and all freaks of life, I'd like to leave y'all with this. Friendship. I love my friends. Friendship is like peeing on yourself. Everyone can see it, but only you get the warm feeling that it brings. <laughs> you guys have a great day. <laughs> <laughs> Folks, um, I want to say um, thank you for listening. Thank you for watching, for joining us uh, for another TCP in the morning, the best thing that you can have in your cup. Uh, we didn't do um, the giveaway today, but we'll make sure we'll do the giveaway tomorrow. Um, congratulations to Ray. Um, Ray won this book. Uh, my mom's not cool, but folks, guess what? We have other copies. So um, tomorrow we will be giving away uh, copies um, of My Mom's Not Cool, uh, which was written by Ms. Ruby Nichols. Uh, so um, I usually don't do this. Um, but um, somebody asked me uh, to do it again today. Um, so I'll do it again. Uh, so uh, here we are. I hope to do it with Meek Mill. Uh, <clears throat> so I just heard wipe me down and got a word. This man said, I pull up at the club. VIP gas tank on E. But all drinks on me. Meaning, beloved, even in the midst, even in the midst of his own struggle, my God, in the midst of his own struggle, he was willing to be a blessing to others. Look at your neighbor and say, wipe me down. We'll see you tomorrow, folks. Morning, wake up, guys. It's TCP in the morning. Wake up, wake up, wake up, wake up. up. TCP <laughs> in the morning. It's TCP 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 in the morning. TCP in the morning. It's 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 TCP in the morning. Good morning. Wake up, y'all. It's TCP in the morning with the morning tea. Sing the song here in the back. TCP in the morning.